What's up guys, Tyrai521, back for another LEGO custom painted minifigure showcase, and in this one we have my LEGO and Glorious Bastards custom painted minifigures. I told you guys leading up to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood that I was going to be going through and making a bunch of Tarantino themed figures. I've done my Pulp Fiction figures in the past, as well as my figure of uh, The Bride from Kill Bill, and of course I recently did my figure of uh, Mr. Blonde from Res Reservoir Dogs. Uh, this is the next series of figures I have in line. I've got four figures here, just like a, the same number of figures that I did for my Pulp Fiction showcase. Um, and I still have one figure from Django and one figure from Hateful Eight coming up after this. Um, but yeah, for now, I think this is one of my best uh, waves of figures I've ever done. It's only four, but I think each of them is packed with so much detail, and I think they all have a very unique look to them. I think they're all very, they all look very different color-wise, and um, I think they all just kind of stand out. They all have their own unique look to them, and they all kind of stand out in their own way as a bunch. So, really proud of these guys. Hope you guys like them. Let's, let's get started right away with Lieutenant Aldo Rain. First up here is Lieutenant Aldo Rain, portrayed uh, hilariously by Brad Pitt in a very over-the-top, um, super American soldier. Um, he's painted in his outfit from the end of the film, like the very end of the film. He wears the tuxedo in the third act, um, but at the very end he's got it all unbuttoned and the tie is undone and everything after a long night of, <laughs> of uh, killing Nazis, as he would say. Um, but I did, I painted him in the style because I wanted to go with a tuxedo route, but I also kind of wanted to, I wanted to include the knife, and that, that would only make sense in context if I painted him in the way he looked in the final scene, where of course he carves the, spoiler if you haven't seen it, where he carves the swastika into Hans Landa's, into Han Land, Hans Landa's forehead. Um, so I, yeah, and I thought the tuxedo outfit was, I was originally going to do like a, a, a military outfit, uh, but I thought the tuxedo, not only are there more reference pictures to go by, um, I just didn't want to paint like a, a military outfit for him, especially considering he only wears that like in the first half of the film, maybe even the first third of the film. Um, so I, and I just thought the tuxedo look was a cooler look for him, so that's what I went with. Um, as you can see, I painted his torso and his arms in a like cream color to distinguish the shirt and the jacket because they are kind of a ver they are kind of very subtle but very uh, different shades of white so I kind of just went with like more of a cream color for the jacket to kind of distinguish those two colors you can see he's got um, kind of a buttoned white undershirt on you see different creases in that you can see as uh, on the sides here these this little black line they're supposed to be the the untucked or the um, the undone uh, bow tie um, his face is a Tony Stark face with a lot of modifying. Um, I essentially, if I can get it to focus in on it, there. Um, I painted some lines around his eyes. I painted his mustache on. I kind of erased the goatee uh, thing that he had, um, or that the original figure had. I painted some lines on his forehead. I was just really trying to get Brad Pitt's likeness down, and I think I did a pretty decent job. Um, if we take a look, he's got no shoes painted on because he's wearing a suit, so I figured he'd probably be wearing, you know, black shoes. You can see the back of his, of his, um, tuxedo jacket painted on there with some creases and whatnot. Um, you can see he's got some, uh, some kind of, what do you call those little cufflink things right there at the end, some little buttons on the sleeves of his, of his, uh, tuxedo on his arms there. And then his knife is a brick arms knife where I painted, I wonder if I can get it look at it. I painted it silver, and then I painted some blood on the end of it to resemble uh, Hans Landa's blood from when he, there, I'll see if I can get to focus on that, from when he uh, gets his, the swastika carved into his forehead in a very hilariously, darkly hilarious scene. Um, and then, of course, his hair is sculpted on as well. I'm very proud of that. I think I kind of captured his, uh, his kind of, um, not like a buzz cut, but like, you know how military soldiers, they sometimes they have like, their hair is very short and buzz kind of on the sides, and then it sticks up like really tall on the top. Um, that's kind of the look he had in the, in the movie, so I try to go with that. You can see it sticks up very tall, you can see the different curls, and then whatnot. Um, and then there it is in the back. So, very proud of this figure overall, and I think um, I really did this hilarious character justice. A character I've wanted to make in LEGO for years. So there is Lieutenant Aldo Rain. Next up, of course, we have Shoshana Dreyfus, uh, probably my favorite female Tarantino character, with the exception of maybe The Bride or Jackie Brown. Um, I just absolutely love her entire revenge story arc. She's my favorite character in the entire film. 
Um, I love her whole revenge subplot. Um, I like how she's she, her very snarky attitude, or her very how she's very um, she's very abrasive and very mean to uh, Zoller every time he tries to flirt with her. Because of course he is a German soldier who has many many confirmed kills. Um, that of course they're making a movie about him because he's just such an such a uh, a fearless soldier. He's such a uh, iconic soldier for killing so many innocent people. Um, and she is, of course, a, a fleed, or a fle a, um, a Jew in hiding, and of course, uh, he does not know that about her. So there's some conflict there, and, um, yeah, I just, I just love her very, the way she takes matters into her own, ha own hands. She's a very, just a really great character in the entire movie. And I painted her in the iconic red dress she wears in the, um, the theater premiere scene, the third act of the film. Um, and it's, it's very straightforward if we look at it, it's just, it's very, just, you know, simple, um, just kind of a simple dress paint on, I've got some feathering, you know, some whatnot at the, kind of at the waist right here, and some stitching and whatnot going along it. We've got some, uh, dark red creases, I tried painting these creases in a thicker pattern, something I've been trying recently, because I think thicker creases in clothing on figures actually gives it more of a natural look. Um, so I tried that, and you can see so there's some dark red painted along the bottom and the, uh, towards the lower half of her dress to kind of resemble, you know, some of the creases there. Um, I painted some, you can see the lines in her figure on the side. You can see her chest, she's got a couple of very tiny dots which are supposed to resemble molds, uh, painted on there. Um, as you can see, her face, I painted, her face I think is, it works just fine, it was just a spare female face I had at the time, it kind of had a, a stern um, look to it, it's not the best in capturing her likeness, but I think it works alright. She's got the two red lines that she paints on her face as like war paint, the way that she uses, the, she paints on with lipstick, um, and I think that, uh, I think that's just a cool mini detail during the whole, um, during the whole cat people. Uh, montage and towards the end of the film at the beginning of the third act um, very good re very uh, bright colors on her that's one of the things I like the most about her similar with some of my Game of Thrones figures I didn't have any of the dress pieces or the newer dress pieces so I just used some uh, a uh, one by two um, angled brick into one by two plates and just kind of stuck those together so that way she's the same size as a normal figure um, the back of her dress if we lift her hair off um, you can just see some of the stitching and some more creases in it, and of course the lines showcasing her figure. So, you know, pretty pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And I feel like this hair is almost perfectly resemb resembling her uh, hairstyle in the scene. It's the, uh, of course, the 2017 or the 2018 uh, Luke Skywalker hair from The Last Jedi. I think the color works great. I think the hairstyle itself just looks just like her hair in the scene, almost identical. And um, overall, yeah, I am very, very proud of the way Shoshana turned out. I was really excited to work on this figure. I finished her the exact same night that I finished uh, my Mr. Blonde figure from Reservoir Dogs. Because um, it had been so long since I did any customizing. And these, those were probably the two figures I was most excited to get to work on. So I just finished them both in one night. Uh, so yeah, there is Shoshana. Marcel, burn it down. We oui, Shoshana. Next up is Sergeant Donnie Donowitz, otherwise known as the Bear Jew, uh, played of course by Eli Roth in the film. Um, what am I? Just he's just <laughs> such a fun figure to make, such a fun character. Um, I painted him, of course, in the iconic outfit he wears in the beginning of the movie when he gives the beat down on that one soldier with the really epic Ennio Morricone score rising in the background. Um, I love the way Tarantino shot and scored that whole scene. It's just so, it's such an iconic and such a uh, dramatic death to that uh, background character. <laughs> but uh, Donnie is, of course, you can see he's painted in a uh, tank top. Um, with some creases and whatnot put in there. He's got some brown and tan suspenders with some buckles on them. You can see he's got various medals hanging down on his torso there. You can see the collar of his uh, of his uh, tank top. He's got some chest hair kind of uh, showing through. Um, the medals, I think I, I think that I did a good job on those. Those were a little complicated to get down. Um, I was getting a little lost with all the lines I had to paint on. Um, but I think I did a pretty decent job capturing those. You can see he's got a dark brown belt with a belt buckle painted on. And you can see down at his shoes, he's got some dark brown shoes as well as those little um, dark gray lines are supposed to resemble um, some kind of weird little... Um, some kind of uh, thing at the bottom of his pants, this little... Uh, I don't even know what you call it. There's some weird pattern he has down at the bottom of his pants. Um, 
his face is a angry clone face with the with the uh, chin wrinkle and the uh, the wrinkles on the sides of his face uh, erased and then repainted to better match Eli Roth's likeness. Um, I think the facial uh, the facial um, uh, or the face he had or whatever in the scene. I think I think that that figure's face resembled his look perfectly. So I just kept it as is. Um, his hair was completely sculpted on. I'm very proud of that. I think it might be one of my best hair sculpts yet. Um, I think it captures um, his uh, his cool, you know, hairstyle in the scene very, very well. You can see the continuation of the, the tank top or of the sleeveless part of his uh, tank top. Goes on to the back. If we take a look at the back here, we've got some more back creases as well as the back of the suspenders. Uh, lots of work went into this figure. Um, very, very happy with him. Uh, shout out to Tossy Figs for giving me kind of a basis or a general idea of how to do this guy. Um, his figure is absolutely phenomenal, better than mine, and, um, yeah, but, yeah, his figure kind of inspired this. Um, you can just see there's the back of the spenders, the back of the belt, the back of the shoes. He's, of course, armed with his, uh, Louisville Slugger, which I wanted to paint in a dark tan to better resemble the color. But I also didn't want his hand to be locked into holding it in one place because, of course, if there's paint over it, his, can, his hand can't rest there. Um, so I figured it would just be best to leave it unpainted. You know, maybe I'll go back and dry brush it in the future. Uh, but for now, I just figured I'd leave it unpainted because it is easier that way. So there is Donnie. It was kind of a better look at the back of him, back of the hair sculpt and everything. Uh, yeah, definitely the most, probably the most detailed figure of this showcase. And uh, yeah, certainly one of the best. And then finally, of course, we have Colonel Hans Landa, portrayed brilliantly, of course, by the wonderful Christoph Waltz, who is always fantastic at playing a villain. Um, of course, he is also known as the Jew Hunter throughout the film. He is the ruthless um, Nazi uh, Nazi colonel that, of course, is um, in charge of seeking out every all the uh, you know the Jews in hiding. Um, he's a very, very heartless character, but we also find out later throughout the film that he's mainly just motivated on, on greed and kind of on, uh, being able to essentially make the best out of any situation and playing people. And, of course, when he tries to make the deal with, um, with Aldo Rain at the end by pretty much surrendering and then being declared a war hero by the end of the film, um, just very, um, a very, very, very slimy, very snake-like character. Um, but yeah, uh, with him, I painted him differently than the rest of the figures. I actually painted him in his outfit from the very beginning of the film. And, like, it was the outfit he wears in the prologue, which is set, I believe, like, three years earlier than the rest of the events. Um, but because I really like the outfit in that, in that scene the most, mainly just because... I don't know, I wanted to do it with the black trench coat, and I really liked uh, kind of the military uniform he's wearing, and I think the trench coat and the hat just kind of gave him more of a, an authoritative look and more of a, a Nazi-like look. I think it was more of an iconic uniform for him. Um, and of course, the intro scene to the film was just absolutely brilliant, too, so it was kind of, you know, there's that. Um, but as you can tell, like I said, he's kind of painted in like a black trench coat, as you can see, which is made out of construction paper. So there's the various details on there, the lapels and some pockets and various different creases because it's kind of a leather jacket, so there's creases all over it. You can see he's got some uh, some gray on his, um, some gray um, little uh, thing, detail on the top of his uh, sleeves there, as well as some uh, some uh, cuffs or whatever at the on the sleeves of the jacket by his wrists. You can see there's the back detailing of the the jacket with various different creases and just, then just some line work and then the collar of it. Um, you see the back of the hair sculpt, which yes, the hair is completely sculpted on here. Uh, the hat is an official Lego piece though, which has been heavily painted up. If we take a look, there's the back of the hair sculpt and then the hat, which was, I believe, a sailor hat, which was then painted gray, given some gray line work. It kind of gave it a, a black border. And then I painted the different like little Nazi or the little uh, the little bird uh, symbol emblem thing he had at the top there. Um, and of course you can see the hair sculpt kind of by the uh, by his sideburns right there. His face was just kind of a standard smiling face. I believe it was used on Han Solo in the late 2000s, which I just put a lot of line work on to kind of capture his. Um, his uh, the lines in his face, and I think I I kind of resembled I did a good job capturing his very uh, his very uh, sneaky uh, evil smile that he has. Um, that's the thing that makes him so scary is he's very 
very pro very polite and friendly when you first meet him. Um, that's what that whole intro scene is about. He, you know, he makes you feel comfortable. He makes it feel like, okay, yeah, everything's fine. And then he completely pulls the rug out from under you, and he's like, yeah, I know what you're doing. I know everything that's going on here because I'm one of those characters. Um, if we kind of open up his jacket real quick, he's also armed with a German Luger, I should say, from when he tries to shoot uh, Shoshana as she's running away from the farmhouse. Um, if we open up his jacket, we can just see his military uniform. He's got a belt and some pockets and then some different, uh, just some different, uh, a red little name tag right there. Um, different creases and whatnot. You can see he's got some creases kind of down by his boots right here. Um... You can see the collar of his uh, of his uniform. He's got some some white little uh, some white little symbols, and then his uh, his like white button up undershirt showing underneath. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all the detail in him. He's a very very detailed figure. Just lots of uh, military uh, military uniform uh, details painted on there. Um, I try to make him look very official and like I said, very detailed and very uh, authoritative with dark colors like gray and black. Um, and I think I did a very good job with this guy. I think he might be the best of the showcase, or at least one of the best. Um, simply one of the most detailed figures I've probably, uh, ever made, and I think definitely one of my, um, uh, one of my most stern, or one of my most menacing looking figures. So, I'm very proud of him, I'm very proud of all these figures. So, let's go ahead and close out this video. Au revoir, Shoshana! So there you have it guys, there are my Lego Inglorious Bastards custom painted minifigures. Let me know what you think of them down in the comments, let me know which one's your favorite. If I had to pick a favorite, oh boy, I love them all, I already said that, you guys know, I think they're, uh, I think it's a really great lineup of figures overall. Um, I think it's gotta be either a tie between Donnie and Hans Landa. I think those are probably the two most detailed, and uh, probably the two uh, best figures in the showcase. Even though I think they all stand out and they're all great for their own reasons. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think. I have some more Tarantino figures, like I said, coming out. Um, I've got some more figure showcases, just non-Tarantino related, um, that I'm going to be filming back-to-back -back with this video. So, um, those should be released either before or after this one. I'm not sh quite sure of the order. Um, but yeah, so I just got a lot of, uh, cool figures coming up. Um, it's, of course, the summertime is ending, so I'm trying to pump out as many videos, as many figures as I can before I'm bogged down with school stuff again in the fall. Um, you know, because my college courses, they take a lot out of me, and sometimes I don't have time to make as many videos as I would like to. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you guys think of these figures down in the comments, and um, I'd really appreciate it. Let me know what you think about Tarantino, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Glorious Bastards. Just feel free to talk about whatever in the comments, and I will respond. So thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see ya. Peace out. You know something, Yudovich? I think this just might be my masterpiece.